So, uh, I didn't know this, but apparently a lot of people think uh, Vermont is teeming with ghosts. You learn something new every day. There are tons of supposedly haunted old buildings and houses, and uh, with all with their own dark tales. So today, we're going on a virtual ghost tour to the Green Mountain State to discuss some haunted inns, abandoned towns, dark cemeteries. So join me, your host James, as I bring you the top 10 terrifying places in Vermont that are pure evil. And we're starting off with West Castleton. I have always wanted to go to a ghost town. I think it would be like really eerie, fun at the same time, and the town of West Castleton on Lake Bomosine has long been abandoned. What once used to be a busy, bustling industrial town has been empty since the 1930s, and there are many who claim that the area is teeming with ghostly apparitions. There is one tale about two men who once took their boat out to visit a tavern in town, but were never seen from again. The only remnants of the men was their empty rowboat found floating alone in Lake Bomosine the following day. Some say that on some nights, when the moon is full, to have seen an empty, semi-translucent rowboat silently making its way across the water towards the abandoned town on the other side of the lake. If you're liking the uh, channel, guys, don't forget to comment and subscribe. It really helps us out more than you probably know. All right. On to number nine. At number nine, we have Montpellier Cemetery, more specifically the Black Agnes statue. Sitting atop the grave of John Hubbard, a notorious crook in the late 1800s who swindled his way into gaining his aunt's inheritance, which was meant to go to the city, he received his aunt's estate to the frustration of the city leaders, but died of liver cancer just a few years later. This statue is pretty famous for being one of the most haunted items in the state of Vermont and just looking at it doesn't really surprise me much. I don't really believe in curses myself. I've never been cursed, at least that I know of, and I've never successfully cursed anyone else, though I have tried on a number of occasions, but looking at a statue like this, I could see why people would feel a little uneasy around it, especially upon learning that the statue is meant to be the personification of death itself, the Greek god Thanatos. It is said that if you sit on the statue's lap, you'll be met with misfortune, and if you dare sit upon it on a full moon at midnight, you will die within a week. Next on the list, we have the Brattleboro Retreat Tower. This beautiful gothic tower sits on the grounds of Brattleboro Retreat, which is a mental health facility that still operates today, but was originally built as an asylum in 1834. This particular tower was constructed between 1887 and 1894 by patients of the asylum, with doctors believing they would benefit from physical labor, and the tower still remains, now standing abandoned. That tower has a bit of a dark history History, though, there were said to be multiple cases of patients having taken their lives from the top of the tower, and in the 1920s and 30s, there were multiple shootings surrounding the tower that finally led to its entrance being boarded up in 1938. Those who visit the structure today claim to feel an eerie presence, even reporting having seen ghostly apparitions plummeting from the top. If I ever find myself in the area, uh, I'd love to check it out. Aside from the ghost stuff, I. I just be really cool to hang out by this gothic tower in the middle of a forest. Glastonbury Mountain, located in Bennington County's Green Mountain National Forest, has been the breeding ground for all sorts of paranormal activity. If you decide to traverse the mountain, you just might happen across a Sasquatch or, or spot a UFO in the sky. There's even an Algonquin legend about a stone that devours people. And if all that isn't enough to pique your interest, the area is also said to be cursed. Five hikers known to have gone missing in the area between 1945 to 1950. Only one body was ever found and the cause of death was never determined. There have also been uh, so, so many strange occurrences in the area. It's often referred to as the Bennington Triangle, like the Bermuda Triangle. See, you get it. Number six, the Dutton House in Shelburne Museum. Shelburne Museum uh, is a collection of various historical buildings, most of which have been moved to the property from other locations. And one of these structures is the Dutton House. The home was built by the Dutton family in Cavendish, Vermont in 1781. And 11 people are thought to have died in the home and uh, it was left abandoned for decades before being moved to the museum in 1950. Staff say they've seen some pretty strange things in there, like the sound of a little girl crying, which 
isn't a sight, that's a, something you hear, James. Anyway, uh, but they've also seen ghostly faces in windows. Some visitors claim they've heard eerie whispers in the halls and felt an icy chill running down their spines. And there have been sightings of a transparent figure roaming the house at night. They say it's the ghost of the original owner who passed away. Some folks reckon he and his family are still lingering around. They're refusing to leave the home. Some staff are so creeped out by the place that they just refuse to go in inside it entirely. Next we have Green Mountain Inn. This inn is said to be haunted by one primary apparition, that being Boots Berry, located in Stowe. This beautiful inn, built back in 1833, pretty picturesque. Honestly, if I ever take a trip to Stowe, this is where I want to stay. But you may find yourself rooming with an extra guest. Boots Berry was said to have been born in the hotel, the son of two employees. As he grew up, he developed a, a drinking problem, though, and was eventually kicked out of the inn. Landed himself in a prison in New Orleans. Orleans, but soon returned to Stowe where he supposedly fell to his death off the roof of the Green Mountain Inn, where he apparently loved to uh, tap dance. So some say on some nights they can hear the sounds of his tap dancing feet on the roof. Others claim to have actually seen a full-bodied apparition of Boots making his way down the corridors of the inn. Number four, Norwich University. Some dark things are said to have happened in the walls of this prestigious institution with its gorgeous campus nestled among the rolling hills and has a reputation of being haunted. There's a boarded up dorm room where a long time ago, two students were said to have taken their lives. Students and staff have reported hearing strange noises and, and voices emanating from the supposedly empty room. Then you have Chaplin Hall, the former library where Books were said to fly and float off the shelves. Nowadays, residents report seeing strange figures roaming the hallway. You also have two other areas of the school that are supposedly plagued by paranormal activity, Ranson and Hawkins Hall. Many students have reported waking up, unable to move or breathe, feeling like something is sitting on their chest. Sleep paralysis, it can be pretty unsettling, but I doubt there's anything paranormal going on there, especially for stressed out university students, but hey, I guess you never really truly know. Next up, we have Marble Inn, located in Fairhaven, Vermont. This inn is said to have a few different spirits that reside within the building. It was built in 1867, and one of the previous owners apparently passed away in the tea room, and apparently he was pretty upset about it too, because now he, as well as a couple other ghosts, supposedly haunt the place. Many guests have reported waking up to see the figure of a man in a gray suit standing at the foot of their bed. There was also an instance where a repair Herman was working on the basement and suddenly spotted a woman standing behind him, but she just remained silent before walking into another room. Perriman was obviously pretty confused, but he followed the woman into the room. When he entered it, there was nobody there. Classic ghost story. Just an empty, dark room. I wonder what the rest of this workday was like after that. How do you just go back to what you were doing after experiencing something like that? Like, if I saw a ghost, it would just change everything for me. Oh. Ghosts, I guess they just exist now. Well, that completely changes my entire outlook on life. What happens after death? What is reality? Am I just am I just hallucinating things now? Am I someone who hallucinates? What is going on? Anyway, these pipes, they're not gonna fix themselves. Back to work. Number two, the Bowman House, aka Laurel Hall, regarded as one of the most haunted places in Vermont. The first owner of the home, John Bowman, is buried at, in a mausoleum on the property, along with the rest of his family, each of whom died tragically. Locals swear they've seen shadowy figures moving about the rooms and strange noises echo through the halls at night. Some say they hear the disembodied cry of a baby, which would really freak and irk me out, quite frankly. I can't stand babies crying in public as it is. Uh, they seem to show up everywhere I go for some reason. So last thing I need in my life is a wailing ghost baby now. Some people who visit the home even claim to have seen the ghostly figure of Mrs. Bowman standing at the top of the stairs. There are whispers of disembodied voices calling out in despair and ghostly stuff going on. Some folks claim they've even witnessed objects moving on their own. Basically, some people think it's haunted is, is what I'm getting at here. 
Number one, we have Goldbrook Bridge, aka Emily's Bridge. Emily's Bridge in Vermont is infamous for its spooky reputation as a haunted hotspot. Not only is it said to be the most haunted place in the state of Vermont, but one of the most haunted bridges in the United States. This old covered bridge has a tail that'll send shivers down your spine. The story goes that Emily a young lady, head over heels in love, planned to elope with her sweetheart at the bridge. But for some reason, the guy just totally ditched her. Devastated and heartbroken, Emily decided to end her own life. Ever since that fateful day, folks claimed to have experienced some pretty creepy stuff around Emily's bridge. Ghostly sightings, weird noises, the feeling of being watched, and mysterious footsteps. Those are just the, the tip of the iceberg, though. This lady gets physical. People find scratches on their cars, some who dare to cross the bridge on foot have reported being grabbed or scratched themselves and you know what I gotta say getting grabbed and scratched by a feisty female ghost I don't hate the sound of that might have to book my ticket out there all right with all that said I've been your host James and I'll catch you yes you specifically in the next video that's often referred to as the Bennington trial it's often referred to as the Bennington trial like trials. It's often referred to as the Bennington trial.